Hello, good morning. Welcome to season three, episode eight of Mindful Meditations on Art Jewelry. My name is Allison Barnett. I'm coming to you live this morning from Patina Gallery here in beautiful, historic Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I've been going, I'm coming to you live for the last, I would say, year and a half and started in the pandemic in my living room since we couldn't come to the gallery each day. And um, I've been doing this less so now, um, um, you know, because we've been open for business, but I've really enjoyed this process of introducing you to many of our artists and the exhibitions that we're doing in the gallery. Um, my husband and I founded Patina Gallery in 1999, and one of the first artists that we um, discovered for Patina, who really suited the vision and the mission for what we wanted to accomplish um, 23 years ago, was Petra Kloss. And Petra is going to join us today on this um, live feed, and I just want to um, get her into our, you know, let's get into this really quickly. I'm going to um, get Petra, let's see, it looks like she joined, but now I need to get her in to our wonderful um, feed. Let's see how to do that real quick. Um, hi, Petra, let's get you in. Um, hold on one second, Petra. And it's gonna be worth the wait because I'm to you live from her studio this morning and she's probably gonna also show us, there she is. Hi, Petra. We can't hear you. You cannot oh, hear. Here, no, now we can. I got to get plan. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for joining our live feed this morning. Of course. Yeah, it's so good to see you. I was telling I was telling the audience that, you know, you were one of the first artists that we introduced to the gallery, you know, 23 years ago, and you know, you continue to be one of my absolute favorite artists in the gallery. I love working with you and love your work, and even 23 years ago, you know, your work really suited, you know, the vision and the purpose for why we wanted to start our gallery. So still to this day, we are, we are riding this wonderful wave together, and I thank you. Thank you. You're doing a wonderful job. I love Bettina Gallery. I wish I could be there in person right now. We, wish, we wish you could, too. And thanks to everyone who's joining and everyone who's live, and keep sending your hearts as we talk about Petra. So I really, you know, I really, I really want to jump in, and I want to talk about you. So in 1999, um, I met you and um, was really thrilled that you were working with, at the time, uncut raw diamonds and to me that was so intriguing because you know i had been already in the field for you know 15 years prior and had really not seen these uncut raw diamonds these industrial diamonds being used at that time and was really excited to see how you incorporated them with precious gold you know taking these diamonds in the rough you know a lot of you know often people don't appreciate them in this raw um, format. So I'd love to just start with that and, 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 and your early life as a metalsmith and how you got introduced to making jewelry. So let's, let's start there. Well, I actually, I was, I'm a, I'm a college, I'm a university dropout. I was studying art history and I didn't quite finish because I ran into someone who told me about this little art school in Southern Germany that was have offering jewelry and actually glass blowing things like that so i um i visited and i really fell in love with the jewelry classes i actually started out making tableware yes with, you know fine tip like um teapots silver teapots champagne coolers knife spoons forks you know things u u usable items yeah it was for the church etc and that was really good in like honing my skills as, as a metal worker. But then, of course, I did downsize in the long run. Like my first jewelry was very big and oversized and kind of, you know, sculptural. And I yeah. was in Berlin at the time. Yeah. But that, that's when I actually encountered the rough diamonds for the first time. Okay. I met this, um, this stone dealer who kept giving me one rough diamond at a time. They were so cheap at the time because they were used mostly for industrial purposes. Yes. And once I had enough, I thought, oh, this is kind of like almost like metal. Diamonds can go through the, you know, through the fire and they can withstand acid. So yes, so I started working with them and then it's kind of like evolved from there. I became more of a jeweler. I made more and more jewelry and I used more and more gemstones. And then well, and you talk, you've talked about the immediacy of making something smaller, a piece of jewelry, rather than spending weeks forging and, and making something of more substantial, you know, size. So I'm sure that that's really pleasing to sort of finish, you know, start and finish something within a shorter span of time. 
it suits my character a little bit. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Even though some take, you know, take their time. The bigger pieces, you know, it, they will evolve over time. Of course. Of course. Of course. So, so you started making smaller pieces, as you say, to really beautify the body. And, and I know that when I put on a piece of yours, I mean, I really, I, yes, that's exactly what's happening is, you know, your, your, your use of material, your use of stone and this mosaic that you're working on. Tell, tell us a little bit about your influences and how you started working with uncut and cut stones and, and your, the pleasure of working in gold. I think there's two elements. The one is, of course, my art background, my art history background, and, you know, going a lot to museums, still going a lot to museums. I love art, fine art. Um, so oftentimes that influence some pieces, like the earrings you're wearing are a little yeah. bit, oh, Klimt inspired, you know, they're Absolutely. really have that, that uh, 1920s, 1910s rich. Yeah. So that will in influence my designs at times. I just pure inspiration. And then um, as far as going back to the rough stones, I, I grew up, you know, in Europe. And I, my earliest memory, I mean, apart from my mom's jewelry box, of course, was going to the castles and looking at the jewelry collections there. And some of mm. them, evil jewelry is not as refined. They didn't have the means to cut gems to this high precision sparkliness. Yes. And I always loved that roughness. It so much the human touch. And, you know, that kind of was from early, early age on for me was that the embodiment of treasure. <laughs> so yes. We love our treasure chests. So that's another part that I just love creating these little treasures that are not clearly not factory made. You know, like Tiffany's has like huge factories in Thailand and it's all like machine made. And, you know, yeah. That's yeah. So I really limit myself to, you know, very small production sometimes when I have a, a design that really works, I do repeat it mm. because it's pleasant and people want it. But generally, there's a lot of one of a kind. And the rough stones, you can't repeat them anyway. The, the rough stones really dictate a piece that is one of a kind. But when you talk about maybe making something again, maybe you're referring a little bit to like these earrings. Right. In high carat, you know, like are, these are either 18 or 22 carat, this Mobius strip. So you're able to make that again. Right. And this, this sort of stems from your background in the applied arts. This right. Forging of the metal. To create a prototype that actually works for, you know, many people and that can be reproduced. And it's also a good teaching object like I have my my assistants my apprentices you know they can work on something like that and then really learn on how to handle metal I mean you know just this knot that you fabricated in the 22 is is really beautiful it has such a, a flow and a rhythm to it and it, it looks easy but I know that it's not I know that it, there's a technical challenge to making it look as simple as it does Right. And everything's fabricated. I don't cast. So I do not do my multiples that way that, you know, they're, they're all really done from scratch. Yes. Yeah. So even though you might make more than one, every single piece is made individually. Yes. I love that. You know, having studied metal smithing myself, you know, casting was never one of my favorite things to do. I love fabrication. I love a new idea and I love making it from scratch. And, you know, absolutely, that is what I love about what you bring to your work. Um, I'm wearing some pieces today, and I think some of these might be some of your favorite pieces. Um, this just glorious tourmaline necklace with uncut and, and cut stones, a combination slices of tourmaline. I know that tourmalines grow in a stock, and then they can be sliced, but sometimes you present it in, in the length of the stock, and then these earrings. So... Um, so the beauty of working with 22 karat is that you can really work that metal around these un uneven edges. That, it's very soft. So it, 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 it can't be used for some things because it's almost too soft. Like the connecting parts, I will always use 18 karat because it has more, you know, more yeah. stability. It won't bend as easily. Yes. But it do, you, do, you, do you alloy your own gold, Petra? I do sometimes. I do, but oftentimes, you know, it's just, I have this um, recycled gold, um, the company that, that uses only recycled gold and they do my alloys for me oftentimes. Okay. But 
give me more time to focus on design and on like you know the the finishing parts because the yes. you know once you ally gold you as a metalsmith know that it's it's fun but if you have to do it all the time it, it just becomes a chore it's not super creative i totally totally get it i totally get it you need what? to really focus in on on your you know what you love to do which is to make so when you're when you're coming up with a design um what's that process for you do you come up with a sketch first or are you just start working the metal how do oh, you be working sketches i i i do I do use the gemstones oftentimes as an inspiration. If I find some especially nice stone or a grouping of especially nice stones, I'll scatter them around and push them around until mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. something to be really gelling to like, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. so I a lot, but then at one point it will, will be sketched. Um, I even color it in. So I really know what color stone is, you know, how, the, how it all will I get a better vision of how it all look. Yes. And then from there, it might go, you know, certain metamorphosis. I mean, maybe once the settings are all done, it could be that, oh, this doesn't work. This has to be shifted. Yes, so, it makes total sense. So you, you make your adjustments along the way. Yes. Oh, thank you for sending the hearts. We agree. We love Petra. We love her work. And, and <laughs> um, so, so I'm wearing some magnificent pieces. You know, one of, my, one of my favorite stones that you work with is, is the raw aquamarine. And this necklace is just gorgeous. I love the, that sort of sea foam green, that sort of like a sea glass um, coloration to the aquamarine. And I, you know, I'll often refer to it with clients, um, you know, that these stones have their natural birthmarks. You know, they're not perfect stones. And, and that's, that's why we treasure what you do is because you're, you, you know, it's the human sort of element to the stone in its, in its raw state. And we, we love that. Um, so, so making this and, and forging these, these components that connect the stones, um, it just goes to everything that you're talking about, your love for working with metal and, and with these uncut stones. Yeah, and then and the influence will be feelable. Like this one I made this summer when I was in my European, I have a studio in Germany as well. Okay. You know, the lakes and being out in the greens, because it's, it's all, all I see working there is, is fields and, and forest and, and, you know, it's just wonderful to have that color reflect. Like right now, I'm kind of more interested in the warmer, darker greens or the warm reds, like garnets, like the ring you're wearing. That was a winter. Plus. Yes. So, so there are seasonal changes, the seasonal aspects. I mean, all of these different, the, it all influences what you do, the time and the place um, where you are. It's right. great that you can work in two different places and that you have a setup um, to really just sort of hit the ground running in both Germany and in, and in the United States. Well, important to me because my mother's over there and still alive. So, you know, I have several reasons. Yes, makes total sense. Um, one of the things that you also do for, for those, you know, clients out there who don't like large pieces, large statement pieces, is that you make a really wonderful small ear stud. This one with a raw aquamarine, again, set in 22 karat. Um, and I think actually on your bench, you are working on an emerald stud. And, Actually, no, um, they're a little bigger. They're going to dangle. I'm working on emerald um, oh. bottom part, but it will be surrounded by concentric circles of gold. And then the top part is a, is a oval. Well, I'd love, I'd love, and I, hopefully I think everyone watching would love to see you work. Can we turn the camera and, and see, see your bench and see you okay. working on a piece of jewelry? Ruin anything. Give me a second. Let me see. So I'm actually trying to solder these. Yeah, you can see it. To solder these little circles um, that will surround the stones. This Petra, can you can you tilt it down a little bit, just because the two of us are in the front? Yeah. I, yes. Maybe even a little bit more. Something so it just keel over. One second. Okay. Like this. Can you see? No. No. Not yet. Like this? N no, not yet. I think oh, because we're both in the it, we're, we're both in the in the camera and the view. I might have to lift it up. I might have to angle it down just a little. It's going to fall in a second. <laughs> you know, I can't really do it, I think. Okay, I well just do it as I far as you can. One hand, Shana. So this is how this works. This is even jewelers in the US are very fascinated. This is a blowtorch. And has been used for centuries in Europe. And I kind of 
you know, that's how I learned to solder. So you add the oxygen to the flame by blowing. Ooh. And this is the flame. Amazing. And as I oh, blow, it gets great. harder. So this is what I'm soldering on. Can you see now? A little bit. That's better. Yeah. So that's a little, I mean, I can't really give you a demonstration. No, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I think. But I saw that the surrounding pieces for the little, for the, the first layer of surround, it's going to be bigger. There's going to be many more coming. So. so is this an, oh, so this is an earring. Okay. Um, I don't have one on, on the plate to show, oh. but, but it's the idea of having a top you'll have a single drop on the bottom instead of sort of this mosaic. Yeah, and instead of being on a, on like a, a platter almost, like on this, on this single gold sheet, it's gonna be surrounded by many, many wires. So there's gonna be like a wave pattern, inspired a little bit by when you drop a, a rock, a pebble in a pond and the waves kind of. Mm. Will it yes. be a bit, will it be a bit like this? Yes, yes, oh. yes. This new work, uh, you know, it just, I'm, I just adore it. I, I love it. And it's, yeah, it's that ripple effect. We just sold a bracelet um, of this same design. I love that you can, I love that you do it so you can wear it as a pendant or as a brooch. Yeah, I've heard brooches are coming back. There was an article in the, I always, yes. because they're so, they're like the, I agree with you. I, I love I love a great brooch, and um, and but I love also the multifunctionality of a piece like this. You know, it has some scale. I'm not a I'm not a large woman, but I would absolutely wear this around my neck on a simple you know cable or a chain. And I love how you've um, layered it, but it's also not too heavy. So you you know as a as a as a jeweler as a metalsmith, you always have to have the consideration of how it's going to feel on the body. As you say, to beautify the body, you don't want it to be too heavy. Um, you really want it to feel good. And, and you know, I want to feel like a queen when I'm wearing your pieces. That's where the, uh, the ideal of colors do applied art yeah. versus fine art that's just purely, you know, about expressing yourself. It really has this application. I find jewelry should, you know, complement the body and should be comfortable yeah. to wear. Unless you really want to be very sexual. Yes. Which not really my intention right now at, at this point in my life you know yes. I'm not worried to express political views or or to kind of ed be edgy in that sense I like to be edgy in my designs I hope I'm a little bit expanding the you know boundaries of conventional jewelry but you know I there's nothing wrong with 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 celebrating beauty and and to me your, your work is beautiful it is edgy it's different but but beauty, beauty never goes away. It never gets old. Um, one of the things that you just sent for the exhibition is this beautiful necklace. And again, as a metalsmith myself, I love your handmade chains. You've got a variety of different links that you've used. And then your use, maybe, maybe moving a little bit away from the raw diamonds that you used to use, but, but using diamonds that have a little bit more life, a little bit more sparkle. Send those hearts, send those hearts. This is so beautiful. Um, and I love... I love just your consciousness so that when this is worn, you're never really looking at the back side of the piece because you've got, you've got work set on both sides. So I love, I love, this is why we call this mindful meditations. You, you have, you're mindful as you're making it as to what, you know, what we want and, and the idea of it not ever being the back side, really celebrating both sides. Well, it will twist and turn when you wear it. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, and this one has a little bit more length to it, which is great, but you can shorten it a little bit. Can wear it or move it up on the chain? Quite long enough to be worn double, but that could be, you know, somebody wanted to say, oh, we could just wrap. You could just, it's kind of a, a, this is like a toy. I just try out all the different chain possibilities in one piece. It's, I think it's absolutely terrific. So you, you also have made some beautiful bracelets for this exhibition. So, and I love the abundance, you know, you're not, you're using a lot of gems in these pieces, but again, it's not really terribly, it's not weighty. Um, and it just, you know, this double aquamarine. So you've got the balance and the composition of working with these uncut and cut materials. 
and stones. You've got everything set, you know, fully in the back and the front. You, 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 you've been coined as saying it's, it's controlled chaos, so, <laughs> which I have always loved. And, and you really are doing that. I love how you use these bars of, of, of gold to connect everything. That's an, it's an unusual design sensibility and it is, it is yours. It gives it some um, lightness and airiness despite the size, you know. Yes. It, it just has, I love working with negative space. And that's one of the examples, you know, each of the little links has its own like inside opening that it's, it's marvelous. It's really absolutely marvelous and a great, a great, a simple clasp. I mean, I'm, I'm able to put it on by myself and to lock it, which is always great for an independent woman to be able to put on her own jewelry. Um, <laughs> you also have this, you know, going along the same lines as that necklace, this gorgeous new bracelet with rose cut diamonds, raw diamonds, diamond slices. It's really special. Yeah, that was fun to make. Yeah, I mean, like I'm trying as much as possible to free myself, which of course is not always doable, but to free myself to make these pieces that I really have fun doing. Yes. You know? Well, it, it, to me, it's very evident that you're having a good time making these pieces because I feel the love and I think it's just glorious. And then sometimes you also make, you know, again, that use of the, of the uncut. So these are uncut tanzanites. I mean, what a color. These are, are really special. I blue. I actually test drove that before I, before I sent it to you. I had an event to go to and I had this totally midnight blue dress to go with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get to wear jewelry that often because I'm not like a very social. Well, I'm social, but you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, so when you, when you, you know, we're looking at aquarine, we're looking at diamond, we're looking at tanzanite. Do you, do you approach it? You know, you, you've said that you're inspired by the season. Um, are you planning ahead? Are you buying like a lot of gemstones at one time or, or ha like, well, you could talk to my husband and he always is grateful that I'm hoarding very small things. Yeah. yeah. I could be hoarding bigger items and he would be in trouble, but I'm having yeah. a I, by now, doing this for many, many, many years, yeah. and being having a very hard time with beautiful gem if I see it. If you see a gem, you buy it and know that in the future it will become something. Yeah, oftentimes I mean, sometimes I'll buy something specifically for a piece, but very often I just have you know my my chest full of your and you know your process and you and you trust your instincts and what and historically of what you made and, and what you would, might make yeah and so I, like, I, and that's you know maybe it's just really time to do something without color and i'll go for the all diamond or all gold work yeah and sometimes i am drawn towards green or blue or you know and then i'll just go and see what i find so, you know, this is a great example of someone who's been maybe hoarding gemstones <laughs> and, um, you know, playing with, uh, you know, these slices of tourmaline play with the faceted material. It's just a great piece, a great. And that's also kind of a good example for it. That actually started with um, one of my galleries had a theme oriented uh, group show mm. and for um we were supposed, oh, the incentive was to use an artist. And at the time I was really into Piet Mondrian and when he was, you know, kind of pixelating a lot of things. And so that's inspired by some of his seascapes that just kind of like has this way of mm. creating a landscape just by, by abstract parts. So I don't know if that comes through. That was not part of, you know, that was way back when, but I kind of still kind of repeat this theme of these mistakes, you know, they are part of that um, line of thought. It's fabulous. And then the other piece that comes to mind that I want to pull out for the exhibition, um, inspired perhaps by, um, um, is, is it Richard, is it, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Sarah, um, in his oh, con Yes. His concave, convex, very large scale sculptures that you can walk through. Um, but to me, just the, the minimal quality of these, working with these diamond slices is it's just, excuse me, ruby slices. It's just extraordinary. Um, and let's sort of, let's finish this, our wonderful talk, just talking about this piece. 
and that influence. Yeah, that is definitely kind of um, a bit on the edge as far as size. It is definitely a hefty piece. You know, you, you will have communication about it if you wear it. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's part of, you know, jewelry. It, it really does invite, if, if well done, I think it invites um, con communication. Conversation, absolutely. And, and these stones, they're like windows. Um, I love that. I love this crystal structure that you can still see. In, I know, send those hearts. It's so great. You have to almost look at the piece itself to see the, 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 what, what, the, what the light does with the rubies. It's amazing. You can see the growth lines of the crystals and yeah. it's really a beautiful stone. And so I found those stones and it wasn't, they weren't in that shape. I cut stones too. So oh. I cut the shape I needed them in. And com so I, I didn't find the stones that shape. They were bigger slices that were cut in Germany and Ida Oberstein. And then I decided to, it was a little scary and nerve wracking to actually go ahead. And I bet so. But I love, I love the shape. I love the composition. I think you did a marvelous job. This piece has been a great inspiration um, to have in the gallery. And um, Petra, I can't say enough about you and how marvelous you are. I wish that you could have come and joined us for our exhibition. Oh. Um, you know, you've got these three marvelous cases of jewelry for anyone who can't join us in the gallery. The exhibition is, um, is all the works are on our website, patina-gallery.com. The exhibition, if it's not live now, it will be live shortly. Our team is working on it. It might actually be live now. Um, but so more pieces will be on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and everything else. Um, and it, it doesn't replace having you here, but having your jewelry and all your babies that you make, you know, certainly satisfies my craving to, to experience you and the beauty of what you make every day. So I'm really so appreciative that you joined us this morning. Um, I know it was a little earlier for you, but for everyone who joined, I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, you. And thank you so much, Alison, for all you guys do. It's so wonderful to work with you. And thank you, Petra. And I'm looking at a, a, um, Jocelyn, who works at the gallery, says the exhibition is live. So for those of you who, who want to, please go to our website, patina-gallery, go to our exhibition page, and you'll see that the exhibition is live. Every piece has been beautifully photographed. We have a great team of individuals working here at the gallery who bring these pieces to life after you've made them um online it's not always an easy thing to do but they've done a great job so to to them and to you and to all the viewers thank you thank you allison thanks to everybody yeah Be happy well. thanksgiving happy thanksgiving bye bye. Take, bye i'll talk to you soon bye bye